currently in a bus to go to a new country. I've been advised by everyone not to visit. I feel like I'm in the ghetto right now because everyone's staring at me. Sing. Nice Enjoy. Cheese, though. <laughs> Enjoying your five pound fries. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, five pounds, what the fuck? I just had the biggest embarrassment of my life. I was going through security and I'm using some very oversized trousers and the security asked me to take my belt off. <laughs> and uh, at, the, at the, that moment I was straight away like, I swear I don't have drugs, I'd rather have drugs. Uh, so yeah, I was just going through security, literally holding my pants so they wouldn't fall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was quite a moment. I guess we just did a COVID test in the airport. <laughs> but we are all good guys, we are safe, we can travel, we're not gonna um, contagiate. Is that a word? Contagiate? We're not contagious, we're not gonna kill anyone. Don't say these words, we're going to my family, who you want to kill? Yaruski! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I hate winter, I hate cold, I hate layers. But you know, it's pretty much the same weather as it was in England. But I just don't like it. But at least here it looks nice, you know? It's a I'm currently in a bus to go to a new country which I've never been before and I've been advised by everyone not to visit but I really want to have this experience no it's not North Korea <laughs> but it had quite a difficult process to be able to go to this country this country is Belarus I've never been to Belarus before I've just left Vilnius and I'm currently in this bus which is gonna take around it's like two hours and a half but the border may take more than two hours just in the border so we shall see. I'm going to Minsk and I'm going also to visit a small city to have even a better experience of Belarusian lifestyle, Babrusk, which is like a small village. And I want to take you guys with me in this experience and let's see how it goes. I'm quite nervous about the border because apparently they're quite strict in the border. We were speaking the other day with a guy that he's from Belarus and he was saying that um, they got him naked last time that he left Belarus <laughs> to search him uh, and I know all that so let's see how it goes so we just arrived to the first border Lithuanian to leave Lithuania and we're gonna go to show passports and I'm not gonna take the camera because they'll be like you know, back on the bus, Lithuanian border then, and now we're going to the Belarusian border. Stairs are closed, huh? Don't be real. So, we already went through the border in Belarus. All good, it was actually very easy. Like, we waited quite a lot. We've been in this process of borders for two hours. Could have been worse, but we're still <laughs> waiting for some people to come, but we're already in the bus, ready to go. Everyone was just checking my passport with these IV lights, UV lights, sorry. And uh, everyone looking like, checking if it's a real passport, just like, guys. But yeah, guys, it was pretty easy. Now we have two hours to go um, to Minsk. We finally arrived to Minsk and we are just in front of the gates of Minsk uh, in the train station we, bought, we just bought our tickets to go 
not tomorrow, the day after to Babrus. Right now we're just going to the shopping center so we can get some internet and we can find out where to go because that is very expensive so we just need to use um, uh, internet. We're gonna eat something as well, we're gonna drop our stuff and then we'll come back to the city center to explore a little bit of Minsk because it's already like quite late. It took us six hours in total I think. Instead of four, Instead of four hours. So we just arrived to McDonald's which no longer is called McDonald's because of all the sanctions to Russia uh, and Belarus is also quite affected so um, they have their own McDonald's which is pretty much the same like the menu and everything we went to the house but um, we we're staying with a friend and the friend wasn't home so we just grabbed our stuff and we came back to city center we're now in, in a shopping center to have some food the prices are so crazy guys like crazy as in like so cheap also we went to exchange money we exchanged 300 euros and it gave us, gave us around 900 Belarusian rubles first dish came it's this salad which I've tried before it's uh, called shuba and it has like some vegetables and some fish as well and it's really nice I've had it before and I like it and that's why I ordered it and Lucas ordered as always some weird meat Romy. enjoy we've been trying to find the bar for the past hour <laughs> we can't find anywhere like to I don't know just to go to have a drink just chill a bit because uh, it's quite cold outside plus it starts raining out of nowhere it stopped now but then it starts raining again we just had these two cocktails and we had a like petit gâteau so chocolate fondant for the uncultured uncultured people <laughs> if that's a word and it was 56 rubles, which is around 13 pounds. So not that cheap. It's currently 2 a.m. and we're in a shopping center which is completely closed. However, they have a grocery shop like on the bottom which is open until 2 a.m. So we literally just closed. And we're currently calling a taxi. And I wanted to say they don't have Uber or not deliver Bolt or anything. They have their own app. You have different kinds of taxis which you can call for which is the same as Uber so you can call like a premium and whatever we're gonna go in a taxi of business class which is three euros basically so let's see how it is The funniest part about this taxi is that we called a taxi to go to McDonald's <laughs> and it was a expens expensive taxi business. A business class taxi to McDonald's ah, but it was all right guys like he just asked do you have any music preferences he would put music whatever you want uh, there was water McDonald's is closed this is the second McDonald's we come to and it's closed Mac <laughs> Buenos dias amigos, today is our second, I mean officially, I mean, yeah, today is our second day in uh, Minsk, uh, we're currently in a restaurant again, eating again, um, we're just gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna go today to a museum, uh, which is about war. <laughs> well yeah because it's a museum about the war but second world war i really want to go because i want to see a bit of like from the russian perspective of this war because all i know about the war is from the west side um and yeah i want to go learn a bit maybe uh, i'll bring you guys with me we'll see everything and then today at the end of the day we're also going to a very bougie restaurant i think it's the best re restaurant yeah it's top two restaurant in belarus and the prices are i don't know guys the prices are so cheap here and it's basically it's the top two restaurant and the prices are like an average restaurant in the uk yeah we're just living the rich life here which for us is standard life but here is rich and um, we'll see i have really high expectations about this restaurant um, 
Uh, did you hear my Russian, guys? How good I'm in Russian already? Another thing which I wanted to say, which I forgot to say yesterday about the money is because of the, san the sanctions, Visa and MasterCard, most of them, they're not working here. From what I, what I read online, um, I think you can check with your bank if it works here or not, but most of them, they don't really work here. So if you ever think of coming to Belarus, I mean now, you need to bring cash. I think you can bring euros and dollars and you can exchange here like in the banks. So yeah, keep that in mind if you ever think of coming here. Yeah, apart from that, we're just chilling, going on expensive Ubers, uh, taxis, which they're not expensive, but you know, it kinda, it's kind of worth it because you get free water. So if you think that you would buy this water in the supermarket, then it comes back the taxi to the normal price of the taxi. So Lucas again eating raw meat. <laughs> Oops. So just to show you how cheap things are, you saw we just had four dishes. Uh, and it was 72 rubles, which is basically 20 euros. Where are you gonna get that in England? That's literally for one dish. <laughs> So I just got this tea, it's made with some wild berries which I don't know the right translation but online it says sea buckthorns, never heard of it, but sure. they look like that, uh, yeah and I'm just gonna try it and try not to die. Oh well, yeah it's hot! Mm, I don't like it. What? Is it nice? Do yes! <laughs> Again, say again. <laughs> no, 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 say again. Mm, so nice. Thank you. Unfortunately, there is a lot of things which are not uh, in English, mostly is in Russian, and I can't be asked to just translate everything. From what I see so far, the museum is very is very focused on showing about Nazi and how bad Nazi was. Basically showing the bad part of the history from the Nazi side. Showing that the Soviet Union was like a better thing. What did you think about the museum? Oh. Yeah? That's not what you were saying. What? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So we're now going inside the Mainz library, which is this one. There is this observatory deck on top of this library and it's six um, rubles per person or five if you're a student. It's quite nice, you can see the city. guys it's already the next day I didn't finish recording anything else yesterday um, because we just went to meet our friends we ended up not going to the fancy restaurant yesterday so we're going today and we are currently at the train station to go to Babruska it's this small town it's quite far from Minsk and it's gonna take us about two hours in the train and I'm quite excited for this train ride there is no internet in the train so we'll have no internet at all but I'm quite excited because it's these trains of like with the beds which they are going for like hours and hours. This train which we are going goes to Russia and it takes the whole journey takes two days and two hours and this is basically as you can see, like we're in Belarus now, and it goes all the way to Russia here, nearly in Georgia, 1,500 kilometers away. 
This is our train and we're gonna go now to our carriage. Where is our seat? Where is it? No, it's here. Where We're already inside the tray. This is what it looks like. There is like beds on the top. There is beds where we're sitting down and there's like a little table as well. And yeah, and there it's also like sitting and it becomes a bed. And then on the top there is another bed. I think during the day they just sit like imagine if I was staying in this bed, I would just sit here. So there would be two people sitting here and then during the night they make the bed and people go to their own beds. Interesting guys. <laughs> What was he saying when we entered the car? What are you filming? What am I filming? <laughs> Documentary. <laughs> so we're just gonna meet a lady now because we're very humble people, very humble kids and we're gonna go to meet the culture. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go to this lady's house and she cooks for us, I believe. No, cards are not так он говорит, не буду тратить свистнать. Если возникнут вопросы на этом самом, на... I'm in the ghetto. Ra -ta -ta -da. No, I'm in the village right now and this is a very different reality here. I don't know, we have villages in Portugal. I mean, we have villages all over the world, but this one feels kind of heavy. I don't know how to explain. I also feel like an alien because everyone's staring at me. I don't know if it's because I look European, if it's because I've got a massive camera with me, <laughs> that might be the reason. Привет. Just casually crossing the rail. We just bought now this little sweet Zinfeed, which is made here in Babrusk. It's pretty much just like covered in chocolate and it's like kind of marshmallow inside. Maybe it's alright. Just sugar. <laughs> Apparently this tank is very important for people um, Apparently a lot of people came here for weddings for photo shoots uh, Because it's one of the tanks that was protecting Babrusk uh, from the Nazis So yeah, it's apparently very important <laughs> something about Babrusk as well is that Everyone is old. It's a very old people town. So I don't know. Maybe kids are all in school Whoever is not in school. So people from my age probably they are they are all in the army. I don't know, but it's only old people I 
as you guys can see like a lot of roads are like this Lucas was saying that apparently Belarus is very similar to Ukraine as well but we are also not far from Ukraine to be honest another thing which we were talking about is how we haven't felt at any moment like unsafe or I don't know I get a lot of looks but I guess it's because I have this camera and because I look European <laughs> uh, but it's never been like a bad look or anything so we're already back at the station we're gonna get our train now back to Minsk <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're back to Minsk there is our Minsk gates it was very fast trip to go to this Babrusk uh, however it was nice to see Belarus like actually Belarus and not the capital city and it's also so crazy that all these people in this train I wish you guys could smell what <laughs> the smell inside this train but they're there for two days that's crazy three days Oh, they're there for three days. We just went home, changed clothes. Uh, I'm still in a hoodie, but... <laughs> and now we're gonna go to the restaurant. We're just in the center of uh, Minsk. And we're just trying to find the restaurant, which we really don't know what it is. The taxi dropped us, but there was no restaurant around where he dropped us. So, we're confused. We just arrived to the restaurant. It's uh, extremely bougie, and we're just here with the hoodies. <laughs> uh, no class at all. This is my cocktail with a massive cube of ice. It's okay guys, I understand. It's supposed to be like that. And then that's Lucas. It's the size of his eyes. <laughs> is it nice? <laughs> Our starter just arrived. I got a burrata and something ice cream. <laughs> I don't know, just look at it. And Lucas got... Oh, what did you get? Carpaccio octopus. Ah yeah, octopus carpaccio. Mm. The starter was really good. Now we're waiting for the main courses. Passiva. So Lucas got uh, octopus and puree with demi glass. And I've got salmon with um, hollandaise sauce and some vegetables. Looks kind of cheap. Let's see. <laughs> Taste wise, I was expecting something more like. I know it's just salmon, but. I don't know. The fact that it's just salmon in an expensive restaurant. In an expensive restaurant, I was expecting a bit more. <laughs> We're gonna have dessert now. Lucas is gonna have the octopus with blueberry sorbet. And I'm gonna have the chestnuts dessert. I don't know, Lucas just went all in for uh, octopus today. Uh, starter, main, dessert, all octopus. This is an octopus dessert, which I've never seen before. But it's got like strawberry and then, like jam, coolie, whatever. And then we've got the um, chestnuts, and there is only two chestnuts, and the rest is real chestnuts. I start with the chestnut, this is how it looks. <laughs> It's okay. Boring, but it's okay. Okay guys, I feel like I need it because I thought it was actually octopus, which is like somehow made sweet. But <laughs> no, it's fake hot, it's like white chocolate. Also kind of boring, but it's nice. How is it? But I think I tried before something similar. Yeah? Limoncello maybe. Where is octopus flavor? <laughs> oh, we just left the restaurant. It was pretty good actually. I know I was saying it, each thing I was eating I was like mm, basic, but no, it was actually pretty good. 84 pounds we paid. I mean 340 their currency. Rubles. I always forget the name. Rubles. That's the top two restaurant in Minsk, probably in whole in the whole Belarus because you guys know what? Uh, <laughs> not like in a rude way, you know. Yeah, and for 84 pounds, a three meal uh, course. One cocktail each, water and bread. some bread with some actually very nice paste. We should have asked what it was to make that. Mashed point, potatoes yeah? with just like mashed garlic. potato with garlic with instead of butter, it was something like this. It was pretty nice. And the bread was actually nice as well. It was warm. Mm, love that. Now it's our last day in Minsk. We're gonna go to have maybe a drink somewhere. We only have like a hundred rubles left, so it's 30 pounds until the rest of our trip. As I said about the cards, like you can't use your card here, so we had to bring cash and we only brought uh, 400 euros. So once we run out of this money, 
we don't have money because we can't use the cards. Yeah, we only have 100 rubles left, which is 30 pounds again. Uh, we actually spend a lot, you know? Because, you know, when things are cheap, you're just like, oh, it's so cheap, let's have a lot. But we saw, we bought. We saw, we were buying. Literally, anything we see, anything we want, we buy. Why not? It's cheap. But then at the end, you see, we spent 400 euros <laughs> in three days in one of the cheapest cities I've ever been to. Yeah, now we're just gonna go like have a drink somewhere. It's also Friday. It's also Friday night. But uh, tomorrow is working day because they had one uh, day off on Monday because of some celebration of event. So they were and on they uh, they moved Saturday to Monday, and tomorrow everyone is that how it works? I said like instead of giving three days off, like, yeah, I'm like okay. Uh, so if you have some celebration, guys, yeah. your week weekend will just be put on this day. Yeah. Oh, wow, I never heard of that. Weird. Rude. Rude. This is such a Capricorn behavior, no? They're the... Is he Capricorn? Is he Google? Lukashenko. Lukashenko? Yeah. Maybe he's a Capricorn. No, I'll give you... Bro, why are you walking like that? Oh, and by the way, as the as this trip we had to bring cash with us, I'm never using my card, so it kind of feels like everything is free because no money is coming out of my card, even though I took this money from my card before coming here. But no money is coming out of my card while I'm here, so... Basically, this restaurant was just free, guys. Everything I've been spending here, it's been free. Uh, call it girl mat, boy mat, whatever. Free. In case you guys don't know, I'm trying to learn Russian. So, I'm gonna now read this thing for you, and you're gonna see how my Russian is. So it says... Bel Telecom. Yeah? Telecom. Correct? Biel Telecom. Already at home and we realized that Minsk is kind of boring. There's not really many like kind of bars which we like. Uh, it's mostly just like clubs and there's not that many. actually a few months after this trip but that doesn't really matter let's just pretend that I just got home from Belarus I just want to give a little review about my whole trip before concluding this video overall I had a really good experience but I have to say if you don't speak Russian or if you are not with someone who speaks Russian you are completely blind in that country uh, Belarus itself well I visited Minsk capital city in Babrusk so I have kind of like two different ideas of Belarus but I have to say I'm actually very surprised with Minsk quite a big city it's very clean the roads are like massive this is very random but the roads are massive super clean I didn't feel unsafe at any point I feel more often unsafe in the UK than I felt in Belarus <laughs> I do understand that these websites which are mostly from the government they do say like not travel it's not safe da -da 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 -da. I understand it's a lot about this war uh, with Russia and Ukraine and I also understand that there's a lot of politics here. It's a hard situation. With this video, I'm not trying to encourage or disencourage. Alexa, what is the opposite of encourage? Antonyms for encourage meaning stimulate spiritually. Include, discourage, hurt. I had my own experience. I had a good experience. Uh, but again, if you don't have someone who speaks Russian with you, Anyways guys, thank you for watching another video and I'll be back soon.